We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And Alex adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here to start off your Friday. Well, he's back with another edition of the morning news update with our good friend Pete Wilson, of course, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. And if you're looking to buy or sell, give Nia a call, 418-4135. Pete Wilson is back, and this is not your regularly scheduled day, so that means that there's some breaking news. Okay, correct. Well, yeah, the news happens. I'm just guessing. The news happens all the time, and we <laughs> did have another major development uh, in the uh, shooting death of William Beach Jr. That continuing story that is at the been at the top of our of our news coverage. Yes. You have for several weeks now. The latest development, and it is blockbuster material is a statement released yesterday afternoon by Jackson County Sheriff Ted Frazier, which basically is the sheriff's office account of what happened in that uh, very, uh, very critical 10 minute period where William Beach Jr. was shot, of course, later died that same afternoon at Holzer Medical Center, Jackson Hospital after uh, being shot by a deputy uh, in the climax of that standoff there at 1818 Gisco West Road. And uh, the reason uh, that it's a a blockbuster is that it does not really square with what a lot of people saw on the video, the eight minute, 22 second video body cam footage that was released by BCI, Uh, even though the BCI investigation into this incident is not over and we have not received their report on what happened. Sure. So... um, I think that the sheriff felt necessary to put this information out uh, because of uh, uh, the incomplete information and uh, a lot of interpretations going around, some of them negative, of course, uh, because the body cam footage, uh, you know, you can't see everything. You don't know whether that's, you know, the whole period, the whole scenario when this thing unfolded, because BCI did not provide any... uh, supplementary information on what they say the body cam no they does. just released the footage and yeah, then you know, let everyone just, defend for themselves on right to, to figure what out to what believe. happened what they could yeah. see and and more importantly maybe what you couldn't see correct and uh bci's report is not out yet i think the sheriff wanted to wait um but he felt like he needed to put something out of course on wednesday um uh, the day the day um before this statement a protest right in front of the sheriff's office uh, with the, uh, you know, family members and supporters of William Beach Jr., uh, you know, making their allegations more public in a more public way. Of course, we were there to cover that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, calling the deputy involved a murderer, mm-hmm. uh, saying that he needs to be accountable, lose his badge, be criminally charged. Sure. Uh, and the, the, the sheriff felt that uh, this wasn't what happened. They know what happened and they felt they had to put this out. And so that is exactly what they did. Uh, of course, BCI will issue its report. We don't know when. I know the sheriff's office feels it could be close, mm-hmm. but you know, there's BCI is doing more than this, obviously. Yeah. There, I mean, <laughs> up, they're up not there, just working on one case. In Columbus and London yes. and, and so forth. So I know we're going to be waiting for that. And my understanding is that when it is released, it will be public. Uh, all those things that they can't say and won't say now will be said then. 
And then uh, locally, uh, if there is to be anything done as far as uh, on the criminal side, the Jackson County prosecutor will have to decide this. But the nub of what was said yesterday. Pretty in, long in, statement. In the, yeah, it's and a, pretty it, thorough. It's a long statement. And by the way, we do have that on our website and on our Facebook. We made that available free of charge because we know the public wants to know. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is what the sheriff said happened. Mm -hmm. All right. Has not been confirmed by BCI or anything. But here's here is the big the big bottom line mm -hmm. is that the sheriff said that Beach did have a gun in his hand and in his possession when the deputies first breached the residence at 1818 Jisco West Road. They did a partial breach, and this is all in the statement. You can read it for yourself. They did a partial breach to get the door open, hoping that that would convince Beach to come out. Sure. When the door was partially open, uh, rammed, forced, Beach was seen by, according to the sheriff's office, because you know, I have to qualify this, according to the sheriff's office, with a gun in his hand, and he charged them. That is when one of the deputies fired, fired one shot. Mm -hmm. The way that it was described in the statement was, I guess that the deputies didn't realize that the shot hit Beach mm -hmm. for sure, because then they breached the door completely. Because after that shot was fired, you know, they backed off uh, to see if Beach would come out or whatever. He didn't, and so they breached completely. And that is when you see, you see, I think most of this eight minute, 22 second, the last part of the eight minute and 22 second video there. And once again, that's just speculation on my part from the pieces that I can put together from yeah. what has been released. There's a lot you can't see right, in the, the video. Right. The sheriff's office, according to Sheriff Frazier's statement, and this statement was made in his name, uh, was that, you know, uh, they did not realize that he had been shot. They thought he still had a gun in his hand, even after the first incursion. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they said that he was violent towards them. He still would not uh, surrender. They did tasing. That was confirmed. Uh, and when they finally got control of his legs because he had kicked one of the deputies, according to uh, the sheriff's account, that was not uh, apparent in the, in the mm -hmm. body cam footage either. You could see... Mr. Beach flailing his arms and legs on, on, on a couple of different occasions. Some people supposed it was after he was tased, you know, more than once. Mm -hmm. But the tasing, according to the sheriff, was not totally effective. The the progs, I guess they're called, uh, didn't make contact because, you know, it's it's dark in there yeah. and all, small area. And uh, until they saw blood on his hand and they had his legs pinned so he couldn't kick them anymore... They saw blood on the hands and they thought that maybe he had been shot. We remember on the body cam footage, you know, on some of the voices you could hear, you could hear one of the deputies say, uh, did you hit him? And then the other deputy said, no, I hit the ceiling, mm -hmm. thinking that maybe his shot hit the ceiling. Well, obviously it hit Beach in the upper torso mm -hmm. and that wound did prove to be fatal as he died later at Holzer Medical Center, Jackson Hospital. So that is... That was the, I guess, the important conclusion made by the sheriff, because even though the search warrant, this came out before, indicated that Beach was seen with a hatchet and a handgun, yes. uh, in the body cam footage, you see the gun that is on the cardboard box. Which, yeah, I mean, that's that's clear as day. You, you right, de right. definitely can see that. Obviously not in his hand, and in the body cam footage, the part that at least that we saw that everybody could see, you couldn't see a, a weapon of any type in Beach's hands, but you couldn't really see his hands either. Mm -hmm. Right. You could see, you could see his, his legs occasionally when he was flailing or kicking. So, um, the protest, uh, on Wednesday, one version, the sheriff with his account on the other BCI, we have yet to hear from. Okay. So, you know, it's certainly not over, certainly, certainly not over yet. Will BCI be able, because of the interviews, and remember, Mr. Beach is not here to be interviewed now. Sure. Because of the interviews and the body cam footage, can they make concrete conclusions on what happened? Or is it just, you know, kind of like... Uh, Kind of like interpretation, a guess or whatever. I don't know. We'll That's just, why we'll, they're the big dogs and they get we'll, called in. We'll so. just have to wait and yeah. see. The the person at BCI that I have communication with is very responsive, but almost no information. <laughs> it's not like, well, you think... They'll be, answer you quickly yeah, to you, tell you they're not going to tell you anything. No, you think <laughs> active and ongoing. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. 
Okay. It, do you expect maybe uh, within the next week or so, any you know, they will not say anything okay. like that. I know the sheriff's yeah. office, um, it was told to me, and this isn't part of the statement, they feel the BCI report has to be nearly done. Okay. Now, when they choose to release it and what <clears throat> form it will be and how much it will be in it, how much detail, uh, will they just say what happened? Will they make some conclusions um, beyond just what they say happened? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, it's certainly um, ongoing. <laughs> you said it too. <laughs> and um, we will keep you updated. Um, and if you want to read the sheriff's statement, it is rather lengthy and um, involved. But um, I think maybe he clears up some some questions that folks had, which you know, is probably a good thing. Right. Um, well, this is, this has obviously been hard on, on, on everybody, sure. you know, on one hand you have a man that's lost his life and he has family members, you know, that are Absolutely. grieving and they're, and they're angry. Yes. Because, yes, they are. Because they don't know what happened and now they think they know what happened and it, they feel it wasn't right. Yep. And then you have the sheriff's office on the other side. If, you know, if Sheriff Frazier is correct and it's confirmed in what he says, they've obviously taken a licking, uh, from the public as well, for sure. Be, be, just because of how people may interpret it, and obviously there's different things that you can interpret from there. I just think there's too much that you can't know or say for sure if you're really trying to be fair. Yeah, and and I agree with that. And the body cam just as clear as mud. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know the video. It's yeah. it's. Um, you know I can understand how you could take ten people and ten people would have ten different versions of what they thought happened. It was really difficult to see. Right. And, and I think... It may have been more confusing and le every, less helpful than what they had hoped. Everybody may have their, you know, opinions and interpretations. You do hear noise and rumblings and like that, but I can't tell when a shot was fired. Nope. I can't. I agree. It's in there yeah. if you want to listen for when it probably is. But, well... Yeah, there's a noise. There's a noise, but of course the door is rammed. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well, very good. I will give up my seat because I know you've got some very special guests here. We do. And we're going to talk about something fun coming up. Uh, we need fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Hey, do you want to touch on basketball real quick while you're here? Okay. Yes, we are in the meat of the girls tournament, the boys tournament. Uh, our first game involving local teams will be Saturday when the Jackson Ironmen host the River Valley Raiders. Okay. But on the girls side, Unfortunately, I have to report two losses last night. Uh, uh, the Jackson Iron Ladies, wonderful season, Frontier Athletic Conference champions, but they were defeated in the tournament last night oh, on their own floor. Bummer. The Athens Lady Bulldogs came in and uh, upset Jackson 52 to 43 last night. Now, that's a bummer, and I know the girls and the coaches um, aren't happy about losing, I mean, because they're used to winning, but had a great season. 15, Great season. 15 and 8 record Frontier Athletic Conference champions. Didn't lose a game in the conference. And you know what? Everybody on that team practically is back. That's right. They're so, very, so they, very they, young. Right. Well, they're not very not, young. Not they're very not very young, young now. But they got another year. But they have, yeah, four a lot of juniors. Four juniors have yeah. started since they were freshmen. Yeah. And also the Vinton County Lady Vikings. They won their first game in the tournament. They are kind of in a rebuilding year, but they were defeated last night at Unioto by a very good Unioto Lady Sherman's team. So Wellston, Oak Hill, Jackson, and Vinton County now out of the girls' tournament, and now we start with the boys. We start with the boys, right. and that starts this weekend. starts Saturday, and then next week they'll all be playing the other three teams, and it's one and done. That's how it works. You it is. You no mulligans. Got to win that. All right. All right, and Pete, uh, thank you so much for your report, and thanks for the basketball update as well. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right, let's head on over to the weather while we get our um, our guests all situated over here. Um, so, again, this weather is so um, Ohio, because <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but it's all over the place again. Um, so today we're calling for partly cloudy skies, highs around 40, lows of 23. It was actually snowing this morning here in Jackson, so... I don't know where that came from, but it did. Um, tomorrow on Saturday, some sunshine, highs of 47, lows of 31. Sunday, a little bit warmer, partly cloudy, highs of 57, lows of 40. And then the beginning of your work week, about the same. But then look, <laughs> moving on to Thursday, back up to 72. I, 
I don't know. I don't know what to even say about all of this. It's crazy. So Welcome to Ohio. I, it's Ohio. It's your Ohio weather forecast. Um, could you girls all pull your mics up right up? Yeah. Super close. There we go. Oh, it's like girl day on Friday. I, I love oh, it. Yay. Girl yay. power. Woo, woo. <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome. And we have some friends from the Apple City Players here because you have a production coming up, which is super duper exciting. We do. Yes. Yay. Next weekend. Next weekend. Yes. All right. Tell everybody who you are. I mean, I think everybody knows this one, but introduce yourself anyway. <laughs> Amanda Crabtree. And I play Mrs. Boyle in the production of Mousetrap. She's also a cheater. <laughs> she cheats <laughs> on games. I'm a rule follower. <laughs> Am I? Sometimes. James, is Those Amanda a cheater or not? She's a cheater at stroller races. Stroller races, <laughs> she's a cheater. Still that's, haven't forgiven her for that. That's just for comedic relief. That's yeah, all. Katie's been practicing she all has. Year, so she actually. Going down again this year. She actually posted our TikTok. From when we were all like in lockdown, she oh, posted her TikTok grief. the other day and Did said she? that she's been practicing her stroller races. So, twenty twenty three is the year. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, you're going down. You're fit. you're gonna go down. All right. I'm gonna give her the old trip from behind. <laughs> She's a cheater. I mean, it's just bad. Go to do the stroller races. She tries to tackle me. This is why Mrs. Boyle isn't a stretch. Okay. <laughs> making sense now. Making it's sense. <laughs> All right. But we digress. So continue with the introductions. <laughs> okay. I am Allison Morris, and I'm playing Molly Ralston and the Mousetrap. Hi. I am Kim Seitz, and I am the director. Very good. And so you guys look alike. Is there some kind of relationship there? This <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <It's> my mom. <laughs> like I had to just point that out. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> All right. So the mouse trap is, um, and you guys will be doing the production at the Marquet, not this weekend, but next weekend. There is your poster up there. So let's talk for a minute about the mouse trap and, um, you know, Old school whodunit author, Agatha Christie, um, big fan, big yeah. fan. Mm -hmm. And um, it is actually an Agatha Christie novel that I don't believe I've ever read. So Ooh, you have yes. to come. I know. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. the thing. So, but a lot of, you know, hers are, they're very, you know, kind of British and stuffy and, right. mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But this one I've heard has a little bit of comedy yeah, to if it. You're, if you are a fan of Hercule Poirot or Miss Marple, then this is, you know, very similar to those um, themes. Okay. So, yeah, there is, um, it is our first drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, you guys all always do comedies. always done comedies. Yes. yes. But that's not to say that there isn't a little bit of comedy in here. There are okay. definitely, some of the characters are, are pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yes. Some of the delivery that of our actors is <laughs> hilarious. But overall, I mean, as you said, it is a whodunit. So obviously somebody has to die. Right? <gasps> yeah. Which is funny, dun, evidently. Dun, 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 dun. Who will die and who, who is, is the killer? Yeah. And who done it? Yeah. Oh, right. man. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about your characters, and then we'll talk about um, the directing of it, too. Amanda's playing herself. <laughs> so, it, you know, it wasn't a stretch for acting in this in this uh, go around. But, um, yeah, so I play a um, rather unlikable person. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mrs. Boyle is pretty grumpy. She obviously is, um, you know, just enjoys making everybody else's day really hard. And, uh, she finds fault with everything. Okay. Um, she's very, very particular and proper. Okay. And thinks things should be done a certain way. Okay. So again, not a stretch, right? <laughs> I mean, minus the grumpy part. Yeah. yeah You're I'm not, not really I'm not grumpy. really grumpy. No. Well, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes, but, but not, not a yeah. lot. Yeah. It depends on if hangry or not, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right, Allison, what, what are so, you uh, playing? Yeah, so I'm Molly Ralston, and I... So oh, look, you look all sweet and innocent. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, no, so me and my... the Giles Ralston, who plays my husband, Sean Murray, um, I inherit this Monkswell Manor from my aunt, who has passed away, and so we're new at it, and I want everything to be perfect. I want everything to go great. Um, so young is it like and a, experienced. like a bed and breakfast or something? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. All right. 
So um, we're just opening it up. We have all these strange guests who come in, and Miss Boyle is my least favorite. And because <laughs> I, I want she everything really to be have perfect. Her staff. I really uh, should, but oh. I don't. Um, yeah, so she's hard to please. But um, no. we have it, – it's really cool because we have a lot of – all of the characters are so different. Yeah. So, yeah, it's great. But I just want everything to go perfect, but I'm very young and inexperienced. Um and we're doing our best. We're making a go of it. And it really is a family affair because Kim's brother, Doug, is also in the play, Doug Sharp, and he plays Mr. Paravicini, and he is fun to watch. Fun. Okay. He, I mean, Doug's always great in everything, but like this role is just, it is so much fun to watch him in this. Good. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> oh, That's there funny. he is. Yep, there he is. And Nobody Kim's ever- the director. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is actually our 11th production and our first drama. So Wow. Yeah, so um, it's going to be a little different than what everybody else has seen. But we have some returning faces, and you'll notice on that poster um, to our veterans that we have new people, including our first ever Jackson High School student mm-hmm. that's going to be involved in the adult section yeah. of AC. Oh, you're kidding. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke that's has Luke done a great Davis. job. Mm-hmm. Luke mm-hmm. Davis, and he yep. is plays Christopher Wren, another really fun character to watch. And Super fun. Cr- Luke just brings oh, this like whole <laughs> like energy to this character. <laughs> he does. And um, Mrs. Boyle really can't stand him because mm-hmm. he's a little – she thinks he's a little off. But um, <laughs> it, it, Luke just does a great job with this character, just making he him – kind of bringing him to life and he's really kooky and Mm -hmm. a lot of fun to watch. Very Very good. No, I love that. Um, you've actually implemented a high school student. Like that's so good to get that young energy in there. It's the future of ACP. Sure. So we're actually having an invited dress rehearsal for Jackson high school, Wellston high school, and hopefully Oak Hill. Hopefully we'll hear back from them soon. Great. Yes. Okay. um, If anybody's watching from Oak Hill drama club, we're trying to get in touch with you to invite you. So, (laughs) Reach yeah, to reach us. out to us. Yeah, We're trying then, to get you there. That's Wednesday night Wednesday at night. Mm-hmm. 7 o'clock. I think it might be turned off, Dylan. Can you ch- flip that mic up? Yeah. How's that? Is that better? Oh, that's much better. Much ah, better. Okay. Much better. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's Wednesday night at 7. Is that correct? Yes, for yeah. the invited dress for the drama clubs. Okay, very good. So, and then yeah. it's win win because they get to see it, but then it's great for you to have sure. an audience and yeah. get to yeah. kind of our, get all our the dress nerves rehearsal, out situation. Our trial audience, and um, we. The feedback from the audience is just fantastic when you hear them laugh or gasp mm-hmm. or, yeah. you know, react to the play. It's It really helps us a lot and gets us energized for the weekend. Right. Mm-hmm. So is there is there really murder? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like is, someone Is there blood? To... No. No. no blood. Okay, maybe we won't go that. Some ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting, though. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, and if you do come – too, because the play is Friday and Saturday at seven o'clock, okay. and then on Sunday at two. Mm-hmm. So if you come to a show on Friday or Saturday and you find out who done it, please just keep it to yourself. That's yes. right. <laughs> keep it a secret. Or if you've read the book or right. whatever, or and you play. know, yeah. yeah. Because as Kim mentioned on the radio, this is the longest running theatrical play mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So and they they play it in London quite a bit. Um, in London, they do something a little bit different. They every night they a different person's the killer. So that's kind of so, so you don't know. So you don't right. know where you go. That's so right. smart. Yeah. So even if you saw it the night before, you won't know the next okay. night. Okay. But yeah. But we can't. I mean, that would require script changes right. and a lot. So sure. Like, so it is going to be the same killer each night, but um, mm-hmm. we definitely. I mean, we've got a lot of suspects there. And as you watch the play, you can learn a little bit about each one of them and how each one of them could have a motive. Oh. Each one of them has their own little quirks. And right. mm-hmm. you know, just because I'm angry doesn't mean that I'm capable of murder. And just because Molly's a little crazy <laughs> doesn't mean that she's capable of murder necessarily. Yeah. So anybody can be a suspect. Uh-huh. Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. Yeah. Perhaps it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so let's talk for a minute about how, how did this play come to be? Did you choose or who, who chose? No, the actual Apple City Players membership, general membership as a whole, okay. come together and they vote on what plays they want to have 
featured for next season. Okay. Um, which kind of leads me into on this coming Sunday, anybody can come and enroll as an Apple City Player member. And with that membership, you have that privilege to vote on the plays. We present probably six or seven, and we read a little synopsis at the meeting, and then people vote on it. What do you want to see as the public? So Mousetrap was one yeah. that was chosen by the general membership. And um, like I said, it's a little out of our comfort zone. We're used to comedies. Yeah, which is great. So, yeah, so it's been really fun. It's really challenging, and but mm-hmm. we have a good team. We have new faces that are that have just jumped right in and – and we're choosing four on we're Sunday. That's four on Sunday. Right. So, so you'll have it. You're a member of Apple City Players, and it's only like what fifteen dollars. It's twenty five dollars for Twenty five dollars to be $5 a member. Five dollars for student. Five dollars for if you're a high school student. So, okay. you can come to the meeting at three o'clock on Sunday yes. mm-hmm. and join our membership, and you can vote on the next four plays. It is, yes. It is a democratic process. Right. Yes. And another fun thing about Sunday is we're actually going to perform a scene from Mousetrap. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so you need a little sneak come preview. Get a sneak preview and start getting your wheels going, who you think the killer right. might yeah. be. And I just want to say, you know, it has been, I was kind of with Apple City Players from the very beginning, mm-hmm. and um, it has been such a joy to watch it build and have new new people come into the fold. And, mm-hmm. you know, for a while there, you would go to a play and it'd be like, okay, well, who's so-and-so playing this time? Because it was the same four and five people mm-hmm. over yeah. and over and over, which sure. is great because they did a great job. Right. But we have had just a fantastic turnout mm-hmm. at um, at – when we have our um, tryouts. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I think you'll see more of that. You'll mm-hmm. see some younger so people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got to a point where we had so many, you know, 40, 50 something women, and that was all we had. And there are <laughs> so few plays that you can do when you only have sure. that right. size cast or that age cast. So now we have this great depth of yeah, range, range of-, of younger players to older players that we can do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. And, we want more people to be involved too. You know, and so come to the meeting. And again, it's Sunday. What did you say? Three o'clock. Three o'clock at the Marque. Yes. And the thing is, you know, you don't have to have experience. You don't have to, you know, I've never been in a play before, but I'm sure y'all wouldn't kick me out. Mm-hmm. No. Nope, not we at all. welcome everybody. Okay. And you don't, if you don't want to be on stage, you don't have to be on stage. You can be a member and not do anything besides vote if you don't want to, just supporting community theater and supporting all of us and I mean that's yeah, really this, absolutely those membership fees go to pay for things right. like costumes and and the set and when you look at our set and, yeah and we yeah. have um you know we've got to license every play but we sure. also have a set to build and we're reusing those panels yeah. play after play after play and you know they get worn out and they need sure yeah got like 30 coats of paint on them and, right. <laughs> and luckily we have a really good sponsor this time it's red door barn event center mm-hmm. so they okay. stepped up to help cover some of our costs too so They're well let's give them a plug tell us about it um they are actually going to be opening in spring uh they'll be located out on john hoops road it's going to be an event center for weddings um just special events um mm-hmm. something that's a little lacking in the area we have a couple places now but this is going to be a brand new one in a country setting with a lake and or oh pond, my and so it's going to be really nice yeah that sounds yeah. wonderful yeah. cool be awesome Good for you. Jennifer right. Goble is her Jennifer name. Goble. Yep. Is All right. Name? Well, thank you for, for the sponsorship and uh, best of luck in your new endeavor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> very good. Um, so cool. So let's talk about directing for a minute. You know, there's mm-hmm. acting and then there's somebody's got to lead the ship, right? Right. And right. more power to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's right. done a great job. Yes. Is it like herding cats? At Some times. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everybody has an opinion. <laughs> But no, I'm, at the end of the day, we're, we are all friends. So it's been, and a lot of family. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's been helpful. Yes. Um, and then I try to do it from a collaborative standpoint. If, if you think something looks better, let's try it. And so through a lot of trial and error, we've tweaked up some scenes and, and I think that's really made a big difference. We had our set built early, actually, this time because the Marquet is so gracious to us mm-hmm. yes. in every production. Yes. Um, so they allowed us to get in there and build our set early, which helped. Um, we have a social media person here who's very great with TikTok, Facebook, these little um, posters that you've seen for the characters yeah. and things. Yeah. So I've relied on her a lot for that. 
but as far as directing, this is my first direct direction yes. of a play. Um, possibly my last. <laughs> <laughs> the nerves can't take you know, it. It, it, is, it is a lot. No, it's it a lot be. more than what I ever envisioned yeah. it would be. But they have all made it very easy. So um, I'm really excited about it. I think the public is really going to like it. So she's the first, this is her first thing and, and the first time you guys have done a drama. First time, right. Right. Yeah. First first time, time for everything. some new people. We are going to have a pre-show skit also. That, and that's going to bring in some new people as well. Some okay. people that wanted to become involved with ACP, but they didn't really want to be in the main show. They didn't want a lot of lines. So we just created a small skit mm. to do at the beginning. Okay. Say, um, okay, let's get your feet wet. And then now you're going to have the bug and you're going to come back. And yeah. Come yeah. Out, you know, in March for our next play. So Which that's, is a huge cast, by the way. Yes. The next play that we're doing. So okay. We need so lots you need of people. lots of people. Lots 10 of or 12 people. people, something like that. Something the next like one. that, yeah. 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 So um, I know that I heard you guys mention on the radio that you're going from three productions to f actually to four mm -hmm. this Great. next year. That's how much we're growing. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. So when will they be? Like uh, that's also going to be part of the membership meeting. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll plan out a schedule. It's going to depend on what shows we vote in and um, who we can tap to be directors for those shows. Um but it's going to be probably one smaller cast production and three larger ones. Okay. Just because of scheduling. You know, you come right out of one show into another. Sure. So we're trying to mix groups of people around so that they're not back to back to back. Um, but, yeah, it's four. That's our goal, four. Love so. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that gives people more people an opportunity to be on stage and also the people that are, have been involved. Like I think Doug Sharp has been involved with every single production in mm -hmm. some, whether he was directing, producing or acting, he was involved in every production that we've had of Apple city players. So, you know, he deserves a little bit of a break too. Yes. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Give the guy a break. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Well, cool. So um, how do people buy tickets and all of that stuff? So they will go to um, marquetickets.org. Um, you can go there and buy tickets. I think they're $15 right now pre-sale. You can buy them at the door as well, um, but they go up to $17 at the door. Okay. So it's just a little bit more. But, yep, marquetickets.org or at the Marquet. Or you Very can get them at the box, box office. office. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Certain even if you – so here's the thing about the Marquet. You know, they, there's always an art exhibit in there. So go in, check that out during the hours that they're open, buy your tickets. and there's a pretty fantastic art exhibit yeah. in there right now in the gallery. So, yes. yeah, I would encourage you. They're open 12 to 5, I think. And yes. So go in there mm -hmm. and uh, get your tickets and mm -hmm. take a look around the gallery too. That's mm -hmm. right, and uh, a lot of variety in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. check it out. All right. Well, what else would you like people to know about your play while you're here? It's it's exciting. It's <laughs> like we said, it's it is our first drama, but there is a little bit of comedy in there. There's some sad parts, there's, you know, some emotional parts and crazy parts. So it's it's everything. It's a roller coaster. So it's definitely one to see if you've not come and seen us before. And um, come. come check out our British accents. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Well, I'll Sean say, Murray is I'll awesome. Say, Sean Murray, Sean Murray is, is fantastic. 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 Uh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Doug does a great Italian accent. And, yes. Um, yeah. yeah. We've, uh, Miss and, Casewell is a, a super fun character, oh too. Kelsey Stewart. She's oh. been in some. Okay, yes. Um, Kelsey's got a great – she does a great, great job. She just – she really, truly is one, I think, of the best actors we have in the community. She, she just agreed. does <laughs> yeah. a really good job, um, gets into her character, and she's got, she's got a great accent, too. So, yeah, definitely one to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and then, mm -hmm. again, Luke Davis is he, – he just – to be so young – and just understand like the way you know movement and reactions and and language his he voices just, his, his voices yeah. he does i mean he naturally has a very deep voice uh -huh. but in this play he's it's a little bit higher so <laughs> yeah. and very yeah. frazzled he's yes. very frazzled all the time yeah <laughs> and yeah. we also have uh, chris o'boyle yeah is one of yeah. Our chris. he's playing he's Major always Metcalf. so fun yeah Major Major Metcalf. Metcalf. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you can tell he's really been working on his accent, too. Yes. So he's been practicing up a storm <laughs> for that. Gotta love that. There's Chris. There's a picture of him. Yeah. 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 Taking it's a cool. bit out of a risk 
a bit mm-hmm. of a risk. And who else? Taking Adam us. Hollingshead. Adam is playing He's the always detective. awesome. Yeah. So um, everybody is snowed in. So when Adam, as the detective, arrives, he has to arrive on skis. So Mrs. Boyle does not think that's appropriate at all. That I just don't understand skis. why why he came why on skis. policemen have to enjoy winter sports when the rest of us you know, <laughs> are to, snowed in at this terrible in. place. <laughs> <laughs> Why you is that, are what I, is that what I'm paying the police force for to enjoy winter sports? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's so you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're having That's a lot of fun with it. Great. Yeah. No, it sounds like a blast. I um I can remember being young and and just loving Agatha Christie, reading books and um. They're, they always, I felt like, started off a little slow when you're reading the book, but then they got, like, yeah. crazy <laughs> as they went. So yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you have to... You've you got to build up to all it. of the characters. It, and, and it takes a minute. You're like, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get yeah. to the good part. But right. yeah. I will and, s- I was gonna say, I will say this, too. Everybody that's come... Um, I know the first time I watched it, a lot of us that are in it had never seen it or read it. Yes. So... Every one of us thought it was somebody different. And I think that's so fun. And people mm-hmm. who have come to practices will stop halfway through and we're like, okay, who do you think it is? And they say it. And every time it's somebody different. And that's it's, hilarious. Yeah. At, the more you get to know each character, it could be any of it them. Really could. You really You really just don't know. There you go. It's so fun. You can come. You can guess who done it. And uh, if you know who done it, don't tell who done yeah, it. Don't say. Exactly, please. <laughs> so we appreciate. That, it's so funny. I said something to somebody asked me the other day, what? what type of play it was and I said it was a whodunit and they said a what? <laughs> I said a whodunit. I said I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Is this was not the, a common a common Was genre? this human like, you know, a Gen Zer? <laughs> Actually it wasn't. Here we go. <laughs> hey Dylan, do you know what a whodunit is? I do, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, this was a boomer, so thank goodness a boomer didn't know. No. Oh man, has to turn. Way to go, cord. boomer! You <laughs> learn something card. new every day. <laughs> <laughs> now it is as the story progresses, though, and you learn more about each character. You'll learn that some characters do have a connection. Um, everybody has secrets, so that builds up into the momentum of trying to figure mm-hmm. everything out. People are starting to figure out who they are and what their connections are. and Cool. Very Sounds fast. like a blast. A big reveal at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So lots of great things going on at the Marquet. Next weekend, uh, you can check out the Mousetrap. And we're going to be giving some tickets away on the radio. So yeah, stay tuned well, there and find you out go. how to do that too. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and congratulations. And we're so excited mm-hmm. about this because I know you all work so hard and um, – do such a fantastic job. So. It's a labor of love. Yes. Yes. It is. It and is. our set builder is here. <laughs> <laughs> he says hi. Hello. <laughs> like every husband right. uh, uh, of any actor has to, has to like become a set become builder. Become a right. set builder, has yes. Yeah. Hey, and the wife's I like, didn't try out for this play. Why right. am I involved? Why am I involved? Because because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so again, if we... anybody has set building skills, please come to the meeting Sunday. If yeah. you've got it a, takes a, a lot of a screwdriver. Come on right. out. Yeah, it's a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Come on out. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of people, set building, stage crew, night of the performances, helping us like sure. get changed and move props around. And sure. So even mm-hmm. if you don't want to act, there's lots of things. Yeah, if you just like Sound to paint. lights. Mm-hmm. Our tech crew is awesome too. Yeah. I, oh, I want to mention them before we go. They're yeah. Dakota Katie Ross and Dakota. And, and, and or Ren. Ren. Yeah. yeah. Yep, they're Very awesome. Good. So thank you for being awesome. Mm-hmm. We appreciate that. I too. always told them, be nice to your sound and light people because they'll they, make yeah. or break whether they, you look good or not. Correct. It's <laughs> so true. I mean, there's nothing worse than going to a, a show and then like weird sounds or things aren't matching up the way they're supposed right. to. Or the or spotlight's here and yeah. it's supposed to be there. Yeah. 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 I mean, they really, truly oh, they're en- great. enhance they the performance and um, for sure. they do a great job. And the Marquet is a wonderful venue as well. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, get there. That's right. Not yeah. a bad seat in the house. Nope. That's mm-hmm. right. All right. Well, thank you, girls. We'll let you get out of here. I know you probably have other things to do than to hang out with us all morning. I, yeah, I do have to go to work. I think they'd <laughs> like me to show up today. <laughs> do you want me to make a call? Amanda and I are going to just hang out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I asked her to stay and play. <laughs> 
That's all right. Now get to work, have fun, and good luck with your production. It's Thank going to be you. awesome. Appreciate it. Thank all you right. Guys. Very good. Um, let's see. Well, we'll switch out. Hey, James, you want to come talk? Yeah. <laughs> We've got all these microphones and chairs. It is Friday. Thank you, everybody, for stopping in, and you guys are going to do great. All right. So, as you can see up on the screen right now. We are mere hours away. Mere out. Oh, wait. I'm going to scoot back. You're going to scoot closer to yeah. me? Yeah. I'm going to scoot closer to you. Mere scoot. hours away from learning the prize for Cycle Search 2023. That's right. And we gave a little bit of a hint. A little bit of a hint. Why are you holding it like that? I don't know. I'm being very, <laughs> I'm very serious. I'm very engaged what, with the audience right now. It's Cycle Search time. This He's is serious business. I am. He is very intense. I'm very serious. It's Cycle Search 23. Today at noon, we're going to announce the prize. No, this is I'm exciting. I'm serious about it. I'm going to yes. sit the microphone down. Okay. But yeah, because your arm's going to cramp up. So, no, this is really cool. Cycle Search is one of, I, I think, probably... The biggest promotion we do all Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. And people get so involved in mm -hmm. it. And it's hilarious because I'm sure it's a policing nightmare because yeah. there's... There's a bunch of people out on my road. What? <laughs> yeah. So it will be on public property. So here's the deal. Yeah. So Cycle Search, the prize is getting revealed today. At noon on 96.7. Correct. Yeah. And we're going to be out at the Honda shop mm -hmm. to do that live. We are. So it'll be very, very, very cool. And a little hint... It may or may not, or may be times two prizes. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. We'll find out at noon today. That's right. Hey, uh, Amanda was just here. Yes. I want to tell on Amanda. I don't know if she's told this story on the air or not. Oh, my. Um, Love this now but, that she's not so, here to defend yeah, herself. As soon as she leaves. So she, she was talking about this earlier, so I feel like it's fair game. <laughs> One year when Amanda hid the pro hid the cycle search packet somebody found it in like three days <laughs> oh my gosh so have you heard the story no. so i don't know what year this was but it wasn't too terribly long ago so amanda was in charge of hiding the cycle search packet and she duct taped it to the rafters of the shelter house at lake alma okay and like three days later a little kid found it and it was like daddy what's that up there <laughs> but not found it because of the clues, just right. found just it because they it. just saw they it. They just saw it hanging up there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so it will be more well hidden this year. <laughs> I would say so. Amanda's not allowed to do it. because Well, she doesn't we, work here anymore. She's been, uh, yeah, denied. <laughs> um, so, okay, here, here are some that of the things. That is exactly what would happen if they let me hide it. I know, right? Yeah, I'd be like. We think we're know. all sneaky and then we're not. Yeah. Um, so when does the official cycle search Monday start? Clues start on Monday. Clues start on Monday. You will be hearing them here mm -hmm. as well as the radio. Mm -hmm. Um, there will not be posted anywhere other mm -hmm. than that day. So mm -hmm. you, you have to, to listen. listen. You have to mm -hmm. <laughs> pay attention because every single clue has something mm -hmm. in it that you've yep. got to start adding together. Yep. To find that packet. And it will be hidden on public land. Yes. So you will yeah. not get arrested. So mm -hmm. don't be traipsing across people's. Yeah. You don't have to walk through somebody's field to get to it. No. Um, so public land, that's kind of, you know, the main thing that you need to mm -hmm. know uh, about that. But listen to the clues. They're going to be on all four radio stations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only place you can hear it. It will not be on Facebook. It will not be on the website. You will not get it again the next day. Nope. One clue a day. Yep. Well, during the week. I don't think there's a clue on Saturday or Sunday, just during the week. Or is, yeah, I maybe think it, there is a is Saturday. There? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, it's just weekdays. Yeah, I think it's weekdays. Um, but yeah, so you have to listen to get the clues. And the longer it lasts, the better the clues get. That's right. And, and that's the name of the game. Again, though, listen to every single clue because it may have something in mm -hmm. it that can tie you in with something else from another clue and, yeah. and then you start adding, you know, combining it all together. Um, so this is exciting. We will be live at noon um, 
not here on mm-hmm. Main Street TV, but on WKOV. Yep. Out at the Honda shop mm-hmm. where you can you will be part of the reveal mm-hmm. of this year's prize. And hey, why don't you stop by? Yeah. Just come stop say by hi to us. us. We're gonna have some swag. Come check out all the swag. stuff that Honda Suzuki Can Am and now KO of Jackson has to offer. That's right. All the all lot. the cool new It is pretty cool out yeah, there. Yeah, it is There's super a lot cool out of there. Stuff. Yes. They have you know, and it's like it used to be Four wheelers, motorcycles, nothing, you know, all that interesting. Mm-hmm. And now they've got these like things that look like the Batmobile and all kind oh, of crazy the spiders, stuff. Though, the yeah, I think yeah. so. But I mean, crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, it's a lot. Side by sides, oh, all yeah. of that stuff. So there's so many, many uh, more things mm-hmm. uh, that they have out there now. And, you know, Porterhouse is going to be there and he fashions himself this like auto sports guy. He does. You think we can maybe like get him to do some like flips or something? We should. Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably let him do that, right? Yeah, on a brand new. I mean, he's a professional. In the mud. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's definitely plenty of mud today, that's for sure. (laughs) After yesterday, (laughs) no shortage of mud. No, definitely not a shortage of mud. Speaking of, so this is not, doesn't have to do with the cycle search, but it does have to do with a four wheeler. Um, So the West Virginia news. Sometimes they get out and about and do some weird stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. So one of their feature stories this morning was they went to this house where like one cousin was pulling the other cousin around in the mud on a four-wheeler. He was on a sled Mm -hmm. in the mud. Yeah. Like it was snow, but it was the mud. Yeah. I'm into that. That sounds fun. And you should have seen them. And then they tried to interview them. And the one, so then they interviewed the, like the dad. Uh huh. And he's like, I'm 80 years old. I ain't getting out there and doing that. I, and then he basically said he was going to get out there and whip the crap out of them for what they did. And this was the news story. And Jamie and I had that same exact reaction. <laughs> them boys ain't right. I'm going to kick the, and I mean, he was like, I'm going to basically kick their butts. And that was the news well, story. They were and probably I'm tearing like, up his yard. That's what my dad would have said. Kit's tearing up my yard. But it did, actually, it kind of looked a little fun. It's it like sounds fun. And then they were just like running sounds and dirty, just like. It sounds fun. Yeah. And I mean, but they're interviewing the guy and all you could see was just like mm-hmm. mud. And then he like smiled and you saw <laughs> Or his teeth still white? Uh, a little bit. A little, little bit. That's <laughs> funny. So I'll have to show you that yeah, off, off the air. So good. go to WSAZ, check that uh, that story out. Because, yeah, it was. Yeah. The fact that it was a story is a right. story in itself. So I want I want to uh, give a little shout out to our intern producer, Dylan. Our sweet Dylan. Yeah. So what has he done now? What has he done now? Other than not knowing who Jim Belushi is. Uh, so. Okay, <laughs> we have a real rough time with Dylan over here because <laughs> we, we'll try to tell him a story about something. And he'll something be like, that, I don't know who that is. Yeah, something that happened in the 80s and he'll be like, what? Yeah. That was anyway. like 100 years ago. But Dylan and his friends did a cool thing recently. They uh, participated in OU's um, That's 48 right. hour film festival. Dylan, you, you, can you, uh, you want me to talk about it or do you want to talk about it a little bit? Uh, I could. So what happened was they sent an email to our media teacher and then mm-hmm. the media teacher was like, hey, anyone want to do this? And no one wanted to do it. And then I was like, I'll do it. So, yeah, me and my few friends got together and we made a little video here. Yeah. So the way this works is uh, literally they give you 48 hours to do this whole project. They give, Which is crazy. Yeah, they give you they give you a theme and they give you certain prompts that have to be included in your video. Okay. And then you make a short film. I think it had to be under three minutes, right, Dylan? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And so you literally had 48 hours to do this. To plan it, to produce to it, write the whole it, nine yards. Film it, edit it, send it off. Okay. All everything has to be done in 48 hours. Wow. And in Dylan's case, this fell on the same weekend as the Sweethearts Dance. Oh no. <laughs> so they really only had one day to do all of this. And you did it? Yeah. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> and so I think that's really awesome and really impressive. It and, is. Yeah. And so. Uh, Are we going to get to watch it? Yeah. And we're going to have a, a world premiere right now if Dylan 
is ready for it. Is yep. there anything else oh, you want to so say excited. before uh, we play it? Just that like we actually had a little less time too because um, I had work that Sunday and it was literally Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the Friday time was 6 p.m. and the Sunday time was 6 p.m. So we didn't really even get a full day. So uh, I'm wow. proud of the video, but but... Keep in mind, yes, there was not that, a lot of time. He did not spend a month on this. He spent a yeah, two half days on this. So impressive. Yeah. And then, so when will we find out? Like, if you guys want anything, or how does that work? Is he it? Does, a, is he it doesn't know. I have no clue. You don't know. Okay, you just sent the video. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. All right. All right. You guys ready? Yep. We're ready. Let's get to it. Last Friday at around 2.30 p.m., a man approached me about a robbery at a local sandwich shop. He's brought in three suspects for me to interrogate. Where were you last Friday? Where were you last Friday? I don't think that's relevant to the question. I think it is. What are you gaining from asking me this question? What are you gaining from me being here in the first place? I want to know who robbed the sandwich shop. Who wants to rob a sandwich shop? I don't know. You're supposed to tell me. Does it look like I would rob a sandwich shop? This isn't getting anywhere. You just gonna leave me here? Yeah, and you better like it. Wait until I get my lawyer into this! Did you rob the sandwich store last Friday? No. Is that all you're gonna give me is just a no? Uh, I don't know what's going on here. How do you not know what's going on? Uh, you work at the subway. You have ample opportunities to rob the store. You have keys to the store. Why would you think I would ask you about this? Why do you think I'd ask you about this? Huh? I don't know. You literally have the keys to the store. Yeah, every opener does. That's my point exactly. Yeah, there's a, like 10 of us. What? Okay, but you were seen just before the store was robbed. I was working. I understand that. I should probably go interrogate the other guy. It's definitely not him. I don't think it's him either. That leaves the last suspect. I'm getting nowhere with this. Where were you last Friday evening? Supermarket. I was a real quick answer. Mm-hmm. Because that was the supermarket. Do you know anything about a sandwich store getting robbed? Mm. <laughs> Maybe this will jog the reason that you were in a sandwich store. This will jog your memory. Why would that be in a sandwich store? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. I don't have a crowbar. Why do I not believe you? Mm. Because you're stupid? I think I'm starting to get somewhere with this guy. All right, buddy, it's getting late. I think I'm going to go home for the evening. So am I. Nice uh, no. You. You're not going anywhere. Why? You're not the police. I'm a division of the police. Where's your badge? I don't need one. Okay, I guess that's a valid point. Good night, friend. Good night. Wake up. Oh, good morning. I, do you got any breakfast? You snuck into the sandwich store at around 2.58. No. Didn't you say it happened at like 3? Yeah. That's no. exactly what happened. You snuck over the counter and you grabbed a whole bunch of $1 bills. Why would I grab a bunch of $1 bills at the counter? Because that's the smallest bill you could get and make all, it unnoticeable. They're all the same size. 
Officer Baker, come arrest this man. We found the guy who robbed the store. Did you get that? Does it matter? Actually, we oh. found video evidence of what actually happened that night. You please huh? To survive war, you must first become war. Good job, Dylan. <laughs> That's pretty good. I I, That's I was hilarious. thoroughly entertained. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> That's like good. Good job, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, we were. I was in Subway while I was waiting to find the line, and then they said it, and I just started thinking of different types of storylines that could come from it. And then one of my coworkers who was just working at the time, I told him what was going on, and they said, "What if it's like incredibly obvious he's the guy, and the <laughs> detective is just too stupid to put it together <laughs> till the end?" It's pretty good. So it's pretty funny. funny. The guy that's the detective, well, everybody did a pretty good job, but the guy that's the detective, he did pretty good. I mean, he had a lot of lines. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good acting, really. Yeah. When he, <laughs> well, he's with a, well, what chewing on it? a pretzel. Yeah, he's chewing on the pretzel. <laughs> but what when he said one dollar bill is the smallest bill, and then the other kid says <laughs> they're all, all the same all size. The same size. <laughs> that's a great line. Uh what was the other one that was so funny? <laughs> he called it he said because you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know because you're stupid. <laughs> oh, so, that was no, good. that would have been so hard to do. So that was impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we the the worst part about it was that was all filmed within the period of one hour. I forgot about this, but the the detective guy only had one hour to film, mm -hmm. and then we wouldn't be able to get him after that because the dance. And then I was working Sunday, and yeah, he just we had one hour to film all of that. Question: Is that the Sudi word of the dance? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it really was. <laughs> That's great. I saw him That's at the so dance. Nice. I was there, and I was just kind of standing around awkwardly, and the DJ was playing this Wait, weird what, music. you standing around awkwardly? You were standing around school? awkwardly? I yeah. do not believe that, Dylan. And then he just walked past me, and I was like, hey, it's the same suit. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just started laughing and talking about it. That's so good. <laughs> How well, funny. Dylan, I thought that was great, and you guys should keep it up. Thanks. Yeah, no, and, and you're exactly right. And uh, keep your spirit up and, and love that you're so into this stuff. It's so fun, the creativity and mm -hmm. all that. Well, I've already got a really great idea that I've been working on for over a year now for yeah. if we do a new Cardinal Village Film Festival. I got the perfect story. Yeah. Well, Dylan, if you do another one, then I will offer to help you with it any way you need help with. Oh, well, that'd be great. We, yeah. we really needed a green unless screen. It, unless it uh, requires me to do any actual work. And then I decline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the deal is you have to put, uh, James and I have to have cameos yeah, in it. Yeah, we have to be in it. Yeah. I, I can already think of yeah. something like that. Like Corbin's a police I mean, officer Bert and he's running kind of around thing. and he like runs through the main street TV set mid episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just Pete Wilson like, and there was a robbery and then there's Corbin running by. <laughs> <laughs> with like money falling well, out. Yeah, with a dollar bill stuck up here. <laughs> It's so funny. Good stuff. Well, I'll remind everybody one more time yes. that we are revealing Cycle Search today. Yes. Very exciting. Noon. Noon today Be on 967 or just come by the Honda shop. Honda Suzuki. That's right. Ram Jackson. Because nothing better than to actually see the the mm -hmm. item Zzz. in person. Spoilers. Yes. Is this, it's not a Times snake. Two. It's not a snake. Yeah. yeah. So come up, hang with us. It's going to be a blast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cycle Search, don't forget, begins Monday. So get your listening on. Get your listening caps on. Yeah. Get your listening caps on. <laughs> That's a thing, right? I think so. I don't know. Probably. You don't know that because you're stupid. Hey, now. <laughs>
<laughs> Dang. It's coming okay. at me hard. Oof. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. We thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and we will be back Monday with the very first cycle search clue. Can't wait. See you then. Bye, guys. Bye. This just in. The Telegram News has a new website. TheTelegramNews.com. Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, TheTelegramNews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. TheTelegramNews.com. Subscribe today at TheTelegramNews.com. Check it out.